Welcome to section 14B. Let's finish this off. This is an interesting um, little piece of information because this is how statistics are supposed to be used and then how sometimes statistics get a little spin or skewed to um, fit their people's purposes. So the purpose of statistical techniques, this is important. We've got graphs, charts, data, all those kinds of things. What we're supposed to be using them for is describing data, plain and simple. This is what it looks like. Comparing two or more data sets. Determining a relationship between variables. Testing hypotheses, we'll do that in the second semester. And making estimates about population, inferences about population characteristics. That's really what the purposes of statistics are. That's why we do that, so that we can give these things. However, sometimes we have situations in which statistics are misused. So. My first thing, I'm going to just jot this down, this is extra. You have to ask questions. You have to um, look beyond, just like when you're online, please look for credible sources. Who is the source of that information? Well, when we've got this, people who misuse are trying to sell perhaps sketchy products. Maybe they're attempting to prove something is true, which is a really big issue to talk about or get attention through fear, shock, outrage, that's that whole spinning thing. Attention for a person, attention for a situation. Statistical studies do not really prove anything. They will either support or not support a hypothesis or a premise. That's all they do. Somebody might think something, they're gonna collect data to show back up their statement. But we still don't know 100% that it's true. That's why we keep doing studies and keep collecting data. So make sure you ask questions so that you know. So here are some different misuses of statistics. The first thing is suspect samples, right? We are suspicious of this sample. Perhaps it's not a large enough study. I haven't heard enough commercials about how three out of four dentists agree that this is the best toothpaste. Did they really only sample four dentists? Because that is a really small sample. So you really have to look at what that sample size is. Or are this is the sample volunteers? Because volunteers, like we talked about earlier, often have a built-in bias. Certain sections of the populations may have been systematically excluded. If we think about those cluster samples, maybe there's specific zip codes or area codes that we did not include in our sample. So that would leave a lot of people out who might be the other side of that or who might not be in agreement with the rest of the data. And again, just like the volunteers, that convenient sampling might have been used, so you have to watch out for the volunteers or the convenient sampling. Intact classrooms, you know, might have a skew or, in, you know, those kinds of things. Or standing outside a grocery store at midnight, who are you going to, on a Saturday, who are you going to see there? So watch out, ask questions. So if you run across something and you're like, oh, well, that doesn't really make sense. Who did they ask? Who was the sample? Who volunteered that information? The next big one that they talk about is uh, ambiguous averages. This seems like a big idea, but you hear a lot of times about the average this and the average that. And average is an um, interesting term because a lot of people who are not mathematical just kind of apply average to a lot of things. When they're talking average, are they talking about the mean, the median mode, or the mid-range? Right? Mean is the technical term for average. That's the real term. Average sometimes becomes a little bit more questionable. And outliers can skew the data. We'll talk in the next chapter more about these things, but let me give you an example so that you can see what I'm talking about. I did a little research. And I found out that the average NBA salary for the season that was supposed to end in 2020, which you know that was a little crazy, 
was $7.7 million. It's pretty high average, right? You think those guys coming right out of high school are making $7.7 .7 million a year. So do we have a lot of outliers, a lot of really high values that are making that average go up? Or do you think that maybe that isn't the average, maybe that's the mode, maybe that's what's in the middle? So we have to question that. It doesn't really seem right. Detached statistics are interesting because there's really no comparison. And if you start listening to commercials, you might start noticing something like this. Cookie B has fewer calories. Oh, this um, health drink has more vitamins. Well, more vitamins than what? It's not, there is no comparison. It's detached. It's just sitting out there floating. It's implying something, but it's not completing that thought. Other types of misuses. So those are kind of three big ones that I wanted to talk about, but there are some other ones. And again, if you start listening and watching, you'll hear these. Implied connections. It may help taking this a uh, vitamin may help you lose weight. It may, or maybe jogging five miles a day will help you lose weight. So that it's implied, it may or it might. Or misleading graphs, we'll talk about those. Sometimes a graph leads you to believe something and there's some issues with it. The x-axis, the y-axis, the is it um, 2D or 3D? Is the y-axis was most commonly y-axis is labeled improperly. Faulty survey questions, those are harder to spot, but a lot of times those really open-ended questions in a survey leave a lot of room for interpretation, and so you don't get good data, so you can kind of pick and choose what you like. And last but not least, this one's a good one. Changing the subject is what the book calls it, it's when people jump back and forth between two different labels. Like you might say, oh, well, only 3% of the budget is being earmarked to buying paper for school. But then when you look at the real number, it's $6 million. 3% seems like a tiny little piece. $6 million seems like a lot. So it's going back and forth between the percents and the dollars. So you need to know what those are. You need to, if you change the subject, sometimes that distracts a person. That is our short and sweet 1-4-B. We'll talk about and do some examples of misleading graphs, some more of them, so that you can see what they look like and kind of ask some questions. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.